Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kwadash. They will learn us unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I'm learning this truth. Shalom to all the Akim, pushing this truth in our sincerity and our honesty to the hopeful elect. You know, basically, I going to do a lesson today. You know, um, you know, the main, you know, main reason why I wanted to do this particular one was I did a, a lesson on my other channel. You know, you can uh, subscribe to it if you like. It's called uh, Yasharala Hopeful Elect 144. You know, you can see it on your screen there. And, um, you know, the, the, the video that I done, the lesson that I done was basically titled A Great Famine is Coming. You know, because we're in the time of Jacob's trouble, man. We see all the things that are going on throughout the world. And um, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. You know, the economy is going to crash, you know, um, they're going to create a new system, you know, a, a new system, which is the NWO, you know, with, with the MOTB, you know, um, which is basically, you know, won't be able to do anything by yourself or anything, man, you know, and basically before that happens, there's going to be a lot of, you know, um, trouble, man, for Jake, man, you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans are the Israelites and, are, you know, it's going to come into a time when we're going to go through a lot of tribulation, man. And if you ain't got the backing of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you know, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, and his name means he is and or he exists. And the name of the Son is Yahweh Shai, who everybody ignorantly called Jesus. His name is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew, and his name means he delivers and or he saves. And that is what he'll do. That's what he's coming to do for the elect. So basically, the main reason. I wanted to do it basically. I, I got a comment right on my video that I done on my other channel, you know. Um, yeah, Yasharala, hopefully, elect 144. You can subscribe to it. And um, basically, it says it's from somebody called Dominic, and it says, What means 144 in your name? Right now, I checked out this uh, this channel, right? Um, I checked it out. And uh, basically, you know, it was just nothing really there, right? Nothing really there that much, you know. But you know, this individual asked me, you know, what does? Sorry, there, sorry. Individual asked me what one four four means in my name, man. Because you know, I write one four four at the end, and one four four is basically, you know, is a is a symbolic, is a symbolic number, man. Because basically, one four four is basically. You know, it's 144,000, you know, it's basically representing the elect, you know, that are going to be ruling the earth, you know, under Yahweh Shai. You know, it's going to be the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and, you know, basically the 144,000, right? Um, that are going to be ruling in the kingdom of heaven, right? When all, well, basically when this kingdom gets, you know, um, destroyed, right? And uh, the kingdom of heaven, which are going to be ruled by, you know, the Israelites, you know, the elect, you know, that's the representation of the 144,000, man. You know, I, I wrote, I replied by saying, 144 represents the 144,000 elect of Israel who will be ruling in the kingdom of heaven, right? You know, uh, I, I should have, after I thought, you know, I should have put like a, a, you know, scripture, you know, to basically prove, you know, to prove what I'm saying. You know, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21 says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. You know, the scripture said we should prove all things. So, you know, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do a lesson, you know, on this, you know. Um, so, basically, I'm going to get into the, the scriptures now. You know, I'm just going to get uh, one. I'm going to get Revelation 7, right? That's the scripture I'm going to use for this lesson. You know, just to get into the nitty gritty of what of, of the of the lesson, you know. Um so I'm gonna go to Revelation seven. Start from verses one. Right? So this is um Revelation seven verses one and it says and after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea, 
nor on any tree, right? And this is basically speaking literally, there are four angels preventing the nuclear destruction until the until it's time, you know, for, you know, World War Three to begin. Because guess what? Right? We're coming into that time, right, where World War Three, you know, we see all the things that's going on, man. All of these countries, you know, um, and forming alliances, as you clearly see recently that Finland, Finland is thinking about joining NATO and Russia is basically having a, seeing that as a threat to their, to their, to their security, right? So we, we see, you know, nations are joining up with, with, with nations right now, you know, and it's beginning, man. It's slowly, slowly going to kick off World War Three because when you read um Ezekiel, you know Ezekiel in, in Ezekiel, right, um thirty eight basically talks about you know all the you know all the nations that are going to you know have a hand in the destruction of America, Russia being you know uh the main the main one man, the main nation that's basically going to destroy America. You know, and you, you can read that in um, Ezekiel 38, right? And basically, that's what's going to happen, man. Before that happens, you know, we understand that there has to be Jacob's trouble that has to come, right? Jacob's trouble has to come. And, 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 and you know, the NWO, whether that thing has to come to pass first, those prophecies have to come to pass first. But, you know, ultimately, the, the end of this kingdom, right, um, in Basically, you know, World War Three is going to basically going to be the end of this kingdom, man. So, obviously, the, there's four angels preventing, you know, World War Three to, um, you know, preventing the the nuclear missiles being sent, you know, preventing the war from beginning before it's actually that time for it to happen, man, you know. You know, um, Second Ezra 6 verses 9 says, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, right? And we're, in, we're living in Esau's kingdom right now, you know? We're living in Esau's um, kingdom right now, man. And, you know, this kingdom is coming to an end. We see how, you know, the state of this society, the state of this kingdom, man, you know, is, is coming down and down and down. The economy is going down. Inflation, you know, there's, you know, wars and rumors of wars. You know, there's a lot of natural disasters been happening, you know? This kingdom is slowly, slowly coming down, man. And it's ultimately going to get a, a lot worse and worse and worse, right? And basically, the destruction, right, of, of this kingdom is basically going to bring forth um, the kingdom of the Israelites, man. The Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, where we're going to be ruling in righteousness, right? Because Job 9 verse 24 said the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, you know? And the wicked is ruling the earth right now. This earth, earth is being ruled, ruling in pure wickedness, man, you know? And that is the main reason why this kingdom has to be destroyed. So, you know, the angels, you know, verse 1, the angels are basically, you know, basically preventing the nuclear destruction from happening until Yahweh Bashi or Shai, you know, it's ready for it to happen, man. You know, when it says, um, you know, that the wind should not blow on the earth or on the sea, nor on any tree. I'm going to get um, Jeremiah 51 verse 1, right? So, Jeremiah 51 verse 1 to also back, back up that precept, right? So, Jeremiah... In Jeremiah 51, verse, this is Jeremiah 51, verse 1, says, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell. I'll start over again. Jeremiah 51, verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. See? A destroying wind. That wind is basically talking about this, uh, destruction, man. You know? The missiles, man. You know, and Babylon is basically talking about, you know, America, man. That's the modern day Babylon today. That's the Babylon is talking about. This is prophecy. Okay. Um, so basically, you know, that wind, when it talks, when it talks about, you know, the wind should not blow on the earth, it's talking about that nuclear destruction, man, that nuclear, you know, nuclear fire, man, that's gonna destroy this earth when you have Bashim or Shai, you know, is ready for that time to come. You know? So I'm gonna move on to verse two now. And go back to Revelation 7. Okay. This is Revelation 7. This is Revelation 7 verses 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the Most High. Right? And that seal is talking about the truth, man. The truth of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Right? That the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites. That we need to repent. You know, come come back to our 
to our true heritage, come back to who we are, follow the laws, the statutes, the commandments, having faith in Yahweh Bashim al Shaya and doing his work, right? The truth, you know, about who Esau Edom is, the truth about this wicked kingdom, the truth about the kingdom of heaven, man, or you know, this doctrine, man. So it says, um, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of you know, the living power of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Right? Verses 3, saying, Earth hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power, Yahweh Bashim al Shai, in their foreheads. Right? So basically, you know, this angel basically said to the four angels, man, that, you know, preventing the destruction from happening, right? Saying, basically saying, right? You know, basically the destruction, okay, basically this the destruction, right, will not happen until the whole elect has been sealed, right? So basically the, the, the angels are basically, you know, being instructed, man, not to, you know, not to basically start off the war, right, until Yahweh, you know, Bashim Yahweh Shai has ordained it, man, and that ordain is going to come, right, that instruction, that command is going to come, when all the elect are sealed, man, and the elect, you know, are the the, the, the chosen, you know, of, of of Israel, right, who are doing the work, right, who are, you know, serving Yahweh Bashin or Shai, you know, on this side, man, and they're going to be the ones that are going to be delivered by Yahweh Shai in the chariots, man, when World War III begins, okay, um, verses um, 4, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed and hundred and forty four thousand of all the tribes of the children of israel right so these are the israelites that are sealed on this side a hundred and forty four thousand right of israel man because we know that israel the negroes latinos and native americans we are a great number way more than a hundred and forty four thousand right and i'm gonna get um some precepts all right this is zachariah 13 verses 8 and it says and it shall come to pass that in all the land, and singular, he's talking about America, modern day Babylon, right? That in all the land, America, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, right? So two thirds are going to be cut off, and a third shall be left therein, and that third is 144,000, of the, the which are the elect of Israel, right? Which are going to be left, which are going to be delivered, man. You know, in that in that in that destruction, man, in that World War Three, you know, but a two third of our people, which is a majority of our people, are gonna get destroyed, man. You know, so the 144,000 are gonna be, you know, the elect of Israel, the ones that are gonna be delivered by Yahweh Shai, you know, which is the savior, you know, that are gonna be, you know, delivered, man. You know, basically, um, you know, some of the elect, some of the hundred forty-four thousand, you know, are dead. You know, already, already in the spirit world, you know, but guess what? Right, they're going to, you know, rise, you know, in the chariots, man. You know, they're going to, they're going to meet Yahweh Shai, you know, before, you know, the ones that are alive, man. And I can also get that precept as well. This is a First Thessalonians 4, verses um, 16. And it says, for the Lord himself, are we from verse um, 15? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So it's basically the elect, the ones, the servants of Yahweh Hashim Yahushai that are alive, you know, will not prevent the elect that are asleep, you know, to, get, to basically, you know, um, be a part of the elect. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. Right. So guess what? The elect that are dead shall rise first to to to, to see Yahweh Shai. Then we which are alive and remain with, with the elect that are you know that are alive, that stays alive, that endure to the end until that last you know moment in World War Three, right? Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, you know, the elect that are alive, the 144,000, are going to meet the elect that are dead, you know, with Yahweh Shai and the chariots, man, you know. 
So let me go back to um, uh, Revelation 7 and continue. I was at verse 3. I think I read verse 3 already. Uh, bear with me a moment. Okay, so Revelation 7, verses, um, I read verse 4 again. Yeah, verse 4. I was at verse 4. I read verse 4 again. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed 144. And they were sealed 140 and 4,000, all of the tribes of the children of Israel. You know, I'm plugging my phone, it's telling me my battery is low. Yeah, so basically, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, the elect, and they were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the nation of Israel, of the children of Israel. You know, that's the um the one third. You know, the one third, you know, um from America, you know, you got obviously you got the elect that are gonna be, you know, basically that are scattered, you know, throughout the earth as well. You know, that are basically gonna be, you know, brought together. Verse five, right? Of the tribe of Judah were 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of God were sealed 12,000. Right? So you have the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of God was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nathali were sealed 12,000. So of each tribe, tribe, there's 12,000, man. Right? Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Right, so there are 12 tribes, and from each tribe were sealed 12,000. Okay, 12 times 12 is 144,000, man. You know, you know. And um, the tribe of Joseph basically, basically represents, you know, the tribe of Ephraim, man. You know, because in verse um, 8, it says, Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. But the tribe of Joseph represents the tribe of Ephraim. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000, which I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin are mainly the West Indians, man. You know, you also got Benjamin in the in the land of America as well, you know, and in um, the UK as well, you know, right? There's some Ben, there's some Benjamites in the land in, in in the land of in you know West Africa as well, you know, you know we're scattered all over the earth, man, you know. Um, verses um nine. Oh, so, sorry. Okay, yeah, verse nine says. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the thrones, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands. So they say, basically, these are the Israelites that are scattered, scattered among the heathen nations, man. Right? Of all the nations, man. Right? So it's among all these heathen nations. Right? So the elect are going to be scattered, you know, to the four corners of the earth, man. You know? You know, so they, 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 they are, you know, mem you know, the elect, you know, throughout the four quarters of the earth in all nations, man. Not just, you know, in America, you know. But America is the modern day Babylon. So, you know, the main focus is America, you know, that's going to be destroyed because that is the epicenter of Esau's rulership, you know. But the elect are scattered in the four corners of the earth, you know. Um, and I'm, I'll get, also get some precepts. You know, as well to back that up. You know, this is Isaiah um, 11, verses starting from verse 11. And it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his right hand against the second time to recover the remnant of his people. I read it again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand against again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. The remnant talking about the elect, right? A few you know, a few, um, you know, a few of the Israel, man, 144,000, right? Because guess what? You know, Israel, you know, the, we, we are a big number, man. You know, we're probably, the, we probably got the most you know, um, population of people, 
you know, among ab- above all these other nations, man. Because, you know, we multiply more than all these other nations, right? And I also get that as well, man, that, you know, the nation of Israel, we are a, l- we are a lot, you know, in, when it comes to, you know, the amount of us that are on the earth, you know, a population of people, you know, we can't number the amount of us that's, that, that, that are living, man. Unicos, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. So I'll continue. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. So, you know, among all the nation, you know, among all the people that, you know, that are in the nation of Israel, only a remnant of the Israelites shall be, you know, recovered, shall be delivered, right? We shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from An- Amath, and from all the islands of the sea, right? So guess what? You know, the elect are scattered among all nations, man, among all these other nations, among all these heathens, man. Verse 12, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You see? I'll read it again. Verse 12, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the, the, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You know? So, that's talking about, you know, the nation of Israel be scattered among all these other nations, right? Yahweh Shai, you know, Yahweh Bashim Shai, you know, basically are going to gather, you know, all the elect from all these other nations, man. One more precept, and then I want to go back to Revelation, uh, Acts two verses five. And um, bear with me. Uh, this is Acts two verses five, and it says. And there were and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Right? And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So you know the Israelites were scattered, you know, you know, by all the in the, all these other nations, man, even in the time, right, um of Paul, man. You know, even in the time of Yahweh Shai. You know, cause when because when Yahweh Shai was on the earth. Right, the northern kingdom was already gone in captivity, man. You know, only the southern kingdom, which are um, um, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, you know, for the most part, because, you know, and obviously there were like few, few remnants of the, the, the northern kingdom as well, you know, in the land of Israel at that time. But the most of the northern kingdom was already gone in captivity when Yahweh was on the scene, you know. And when, um, you know, the Apostle Paul was, you know, teaching and, you know, um, writing letters, you know, to in, in Ephesus, you know, in um, in Ephesus, you know, in and all these other, you know, um, places where the Israelites were scattered, man. You know, right into the Ephesians, to the Thessalonians, you know, to the Galatians, you know, Rome as well. You know, all these other nations where the Israelites were scattered, man. You know, Corinthians in Corinth as well, Corinthians, you know. So basically, I'm going to go back to Revelation 7. Um, what verse was I? I think I was at verse 9, yeah. Revelation um, 7, 7, 7. Yeah, verse 9. So this is basically verse 10 now. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our power, we sit it upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Now that Lamb is basically the Yahweh Shai, man. You know, because he was that, he made that ultimate sacrifice, you know, for, for Israel, man. Right? Verse 11, and all the angels stood round about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped Yahweh Bashim Shai, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our power forever and ever. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I say, said unto him, Sir, th- thou knowest, and said, un- said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. You know, this great tribulation, you know, is talking about, you know, um, Jacob's trouble, man. You know, 
when you know the you know the elect you know that went through you know Jacob's trouble they went through you know um martial law you know the famine you know they went through you know oh sorry they're gonna go through you know even um the heart of temptation which is in revelation 13 verse 16 you know will be able to buy or sell you know what i'm talking about you know and they endure to the end there, verse 15, therefore are they before the throne of the Most High and serve him day and night in this temple, and he sitteth on the throne, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. You know? And basically, ultimately, man, all Israel are going to come back into the kingdom, man, in their right mind, man. You know, not being bogged down, not being wicked, man. You know, but it's basically starting from the elect. The elect is basically going to start from the elect, and through the elect, you know, the, 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 the two thirds, you know. You know, and basically, basically, in general, the wicked of Israel that got destroyed, right, in the, in the nuclear destruction, basically are going to get brought back into the kingdom. You know, um, it says, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sunlight on them nor any eat. Because guess what? The Israelites are not going to be catching hell anymore, man. You know, we're going to be living in peace, in, 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 in in tranquility man we're not going to be catching hell we're not going to be under the curses anymore verse 17 for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them you know which is yahweh shai and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and yahweh bashim shall wipe away all tears from their eyes so guess what when, 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 when we get you know when we're in the kingdom man we're not going to be suffering anymore we're going to be living in happiness man we're going to be living in peace. We're going to be living in righteousness, man. Not only the wickedness, wickedness that's been going on, you know, on the earth, you know. So basically, that's basically, you know, the breakdown, you know, of Revelation 7, basically into the 144,000, you know, which are the elect of Israel, you know, that are going to be, you know, be governed from the four corners of the earth, you know, um, and be delivered when the Hawashah comes back, man, you know. So... You know, I hope, you know, this lesson was edifying. You know, I hope it was informative. With that, I'm going to say all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Raka Kwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Until next time, Shalom.